Cockpit weather radar measures reflectivity, which is the strength of a radar signal's return off of precipitation within a cloud. Pilots avoid highly reflective areas like storm centers. However, high reflectivity is not always correlated with a condition known as high ice water content. These conditions are characterized by tiny ice and water particles suspended in a cloud. These particles are too small to influence reflectivity, but they can still cause engine problems and clog up pitot tubes and instruments. The primary goal here is to be able to develop a radar capability to look ahead of the aircraft and identify areas of high ice water content so that pilots on today's transport aircraft can see and avoid those sorts of conditions. In 2015, we boarded this aircraft, took it through the Bahamas and the Caribbean to collect radar signatures of high ice water content conditions. Using those radar signatures, we developed an algorithm that would both detect those conditions and reject benign cloud conditions. During this flight campaign, we're actually going and testing that algorithm, both its performance in range as well as its performance in accuracy. We're seeing if we have good correlation between the radar predicted ice water content and then the in-situ measurements with our icing instruments. Tom, Steve. Yep. We've got a cell to the left of right of track, about five degrees each. I'd suggest we uh, pick one of the two and steer towards it. One of the biggest challenges for the Highway Commission is just that basically it's always constantly changing. Uh, you go out with a plan, but you don't follow your plan. Um, you are expected to change and be on the go with the weather itself. So. I think we might want to be at the southwesterly part of the storm. to have another ice water content spike and right before we get to the waypoint. Just went through a peak of about two grams per cubic meter on that. Cool. I was saying 1.5 plus or minus one. I think we may have a uh, pedo anomaly on ADC2. We do have some times that the pitot tubes get overwhelmed by the uh, water content or the ice content and our air speeds go to zero for a, a short period of time. While we're doing that, we just leave the throttle set where they are, continue on with the line that we're flying, and fly the specific ground speed. So pilots, what they will see in the future will be, uh, in addition to the reflectivity that they normally see on their displays, you'll see additional parameters, additional information color or a symbol or something of that sort that will indicate high concentration levels of ice in front of them and basically you'll be able to fly around that. It's a lot of fast thinking, a lot of coordination, and it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun actually.